For the second time this year, Anthropic embarrassed OpenAI by releasing a new state-of-the-art large language model that sweeps GPT-4.0 on every major benchmark. It's not even all that close, and Claude is now king of the software engineering benchmark by a wide margin. But I'm not here to simply simp for Claude, because yesterday they also released what is perhaps the most dangerous AI feature ever handed over to the public. The ability to open Excel and do all your pointless spreadsheets at work. The ability to fill out a patient's chart if you're a doctor. The ability to log into your Robinhood account and YOLO your life savings, and really anything else humans do by taking full control over your mouse, keyboard, and monitor. What could possibly go wrong? In today's video, we'll jump back on the AI Doomer hype train and take this mind-blowing new technology for a test drive. It is October 23rd, 2024, and you're watching The Code Report. As someone with no biological friends, my life essentially is my computer. My wolf pack consists of the original gangster GPT, the based AF Llama, the desperately wants to be cool Gemini, and of course the Apex Alpha model Claude. Yesterday, Claude became even more powerful with an upgrade to the Sonnet 3.5 model. As you can see here, it beats GPT-4.0 on graduate level reasoning, programming, and visual Q&A. It only loses to Gemini 1.5 on math, but that's comparing 4-shot to 0-shot. And it also sits on top of the software engineering benchmark, where it's able to solve 49% of GitHub issues that it encounters. One big caveat, though, is that it's comparing to GPT-4.0 and not the new O1 model, which itself relies on the chain of thought technique to automatically reprompt itself, thus making comparisons difficult. This upgrade is cool and all, but the real game-changing new feature released is something called computer use, which is available to developers via the API now. So I immediately put it to use and started burning through tokens, which cost $15 for a bundle of a million. The first thing I asked it to do is something I thought it would fail at, which was to find the SVG code for the Fireship logo. But it actually succeeded, so let's break it down step by step. Because basically, it prompts itself in an infinite loop, performing different actions, analyzing the results, which lead to other actions, until it solves the original problem. In this case, it takes a screenshot of the desktop and notices that I have Firefox there. That leads to another action to click on the Firefox icon. It now sees the address bar, which leads to another action to move the mouse there and click on it, which is followed by another action to type out the URL. Now that it's on the website, it finds the logo and right-clicks on it. It then opens up the dev tools to inspect the HTML, copies the code, and returns it. Pretty amazing, because we just did some web scraping entirely with natural language. But it can use virtually any application on your computer. Like I also asked it to build a net worth calculator in Excel, or LibreOffice. Not only did it input all the data, but also created the formulas for the calculations. I even prompted it to open up XPaint and paint a picture of a horse, and it created this masterpiece. It may not look like much, but this image didn't come from some diffusion magic. It was created with the actual stroke of a pen like a real artist. But this technology is far from perfect. Like at one point, right in the middle of a coding task, it decided to go on the internet and browse photos of Yellowstone National Park. And I do the same thing when I get burned out from coding. However, there's a ton of potential for bad things things to happen here. Like if you use this tool to manage your bank account, it's only a matter of time before Claude drains it to invest it all in Godius Maximus, a shitcoin that's pumped entirely by AI and now has a $500 million market cap. But what you'll notice here is that I'm not actually raw dogging this thing on my main computer, it's actually running in a safe sandbox with Docker. In fact, you can run it right now on your machine with one command. You just need to have Docker installed and have an Anthropic API key. But be warned, this thing burns through tokens extremely fast. The good news is that it mostly uses input tokens, which are a lot cheaper cheaper, and it needs all these tokens because like GPT-01, it takes the output of one prompt and uses it as the input for the next prompt, and will do that in a loop until it gets the result you asked for, or until it crashes, which happens a lot. But still, Claude is the best model out there when it comes to real-world computer environments, at least according to the OS World benchmark. However, it's nowhere near human level and will take a lot of training and reinforcement to get there. The main bottleneck here is that it requires a lot of compute time and tokens to do simple things that us humans take for granted, like all the prompts I've showed you have taken five to ten minutes to complete. But eventually that problem will be solved. Companies like Amazon, Google, and Microsoft are investing in nuclear to power massive AI data centers, but eventually chain of thought action models like this will likely be baked into every computer. And I'm not just talking about your personal computer, but the brains of the robots. They're already building robots that can drive you around, build you toys, perform medical procedures, and even put food in your dish. The future looks bright, until one day you wake up and realize that the guy Claude is named after, Claude Shannon, was right all along. When he predicted that we will be to robots what dogs are to humans. This has been The Code Report. Thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next one.